Hey guys, welcome to Calvary, and we appreciate you guys coming out tonight to be with us for our Wednesday night Bible study time. Uh, we'll be uh, making some announcements here, upcoming events for this coming weekend here at Calvary, and we would like to just say thank you for everybody who came out uh, to services this past Sunday, and then again tonight, we've got a pretty good crowd in, in here, and I know we've got a lot of people who are participating online. Um, and I think everybody is probably, how many of you in here are a little bit tired because you sat up a little bit too long last night watching whatever channel you were watching, right? I, me too. I sat up a little bit too late. Um, but I, uh, and we know, we knew it where we were going to be the day before we, the election happened. We've all been saying it was going to be some days before everything got sorted out. And that is still true. So we are praying and waiting like everybody else. I don't have a secret pipeline to the Lord. And if he does, he's not telling me anything yet. So, and I promise you, I'll tell you as soon as he tells me. All right. But uh, we just, we're praying too. And, and I trust that everybody will just be patient. Um, and don't be rash. Don't be hasty. Don't be angry and things. Just be still and let the process take place. And, and let's see how the Lord works it out. Amen. So. Um, but if you have your Bible, please turn over to Psalms 23. Psalms 23 is where I want to read my scripture from tonight. <clears throat> In times like this, and, and I am, I'm a fellow who goes back to scripture that is familiar. And I just, during my time today, I just I went back to the Psalms to read. And I was reading in Psalms 1, and I, I just sort of read up through, and I got to Psalms 23. And I just said, Lord, I'm glad that Psalms 23 is in the Bible. And I'm glad that you gave it to us for such a time as this. And for uh, not just this, but for the ways that you have worked in our lives. And I just, let's read it. I'll read it for you and then we'll just, uh, we, we'll go through here. You ready? Psalms 23 verse 1, the Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. Can I just say something to you today? That's still true. This has not disappeared. And it's not gone away. Our shepherd is still Jehovah. Our shepherd abides. And I want you to look at this. And it says here, the Lord is my shepherd. And that word shepherd means he keeps on shepherding me. It means he has been shepherding me. He keeps on shepherding me. And he will be shepherding me in the future. I mean, we have an eternal shepherd. We have the great shepherd is what they call him in the New Testament. But the Lord is my shepherd. And I'm glad because we need a shepherd. And I want to say this too about just the confession of the Lord is my shepherd. This is a man who knew better than to try to shepherd himself. That's, we're talking about David. I mean, if you read the life of David, you'll read it and there'll be places in David's life where there just could not have been a better man. I mean, just could not have been a better uh, person. Just could not have been a happier person. Just could not have been a, a person who was more on the spot than David was, and then sometimes you read some of the details about David's life, and you just want to scratch your head and go, uh, hey, dude, what are you doing? I mean, or what were you thinking, or what were you, you know, because they, they, he, but David was wonderfully human, okay? But in the middle of all of that, David learned, I need a shepherd. David knew he needed somebody to lead him. He needed somebody to direct him. He needed somebody to help him. And he found that in his relationship with the Lord. And I want to say this to us in here tonight and those who are watching online. If the Lord is your shepherd, you've got a reason to rejoice. You've got a reason to rejoice. You've got a reason to be thankful. Now, did things work out like we thought they were going to work out last night? And the answer is obviously not. But you know the truth of it is we already knew that our shepherd was still going to abide. Thank God God's word didn't go away. Thank God the truth of who he is has not changed. Regardless of what's happening around us, he abides. He remains. And I want to say today, lay hold of the truth that the Lord is my shepherd. Now, I want to say this to you too. If you're trying to be your own shepherd, if you're looking at things like, I'm going to figure this out myself, or hey, I'm going to sort life out for myself, I'm going to live life on my own terms, I want to tell you something today, it'll be a happy day for you when God finally breaks you down to the point to where, or God finally brings you to the end of yourself enough to where you say, you know what, I need the Lord, and He is standing right there. All right, and I want to say to you, go ahead and call him your shepherd and let him lead. Let him, let him guide. Amen. So look at this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want. Now I want to say this about wanting. There's a lot of times for us, we get confused about the difference between wants and needs. 
Okay, now, does anybody know what every store in the country is decorated for right now? It ain't Thanksgiving. It's Christmas. So who has kids who are bringing Christmas lists to you? Okay, all right? They need these things, right? It's a need. They keep saying, I need this, right? And it's a, it's a pointed need because they'll bring you one of mine, and I'm not going to tell you which one it is. I'm just going to say it was the girl in our house, okay? She would put together a Christmas list with pictures. I mean, before there was links. I mean, now there's a link to these things. And now when she sends her Christmas list over, and she still does this to us, okay, or to help us find her stuff, it's a link with free shipping, you know, so we can get it delivered right straight to her, okay? But it's always not ever, I, I, I want these things. It's I need these things, all right? And we, we, and I'm making fun, but stay with me here for a second because there's a difference between what we want and what we need. Okay, now I want to say this to us. None of us are wise enough to distinguish that every time we have that come up in our lives. We need our shepherd to decide. We need our shepherd to decide. We need our shepherd to look at it and say, I know the direction you're trying to go, but I'm going to close that door without a whole lot of explanation right now. Or, hey, I know what you're trying to accomplish, but right now I'm going to close that window because I need you to be looking at something else. Now, some of us in this room are frustrated, and not just over the election or whatever else is going on with that. Everybody's frustrated with that, as far as I know, all right? But i got to say this to you. Listen, there are in our personal areas of our lives, sometimes God closes doors and doesn't leave a very good explanation behind himself on closing the door. We just run into the barrier. And we're like, okay, wait a minute. And, but he decides what we, what we need versus what we want. Have you ever gone to God with your prayer list and you, you had a good prayer list and it was a meaningful prayer list and you, were, you went to God with everything like you were supposed to and you went with Scripture and it's like we go to God almost like we take our Christmas list. And we go to Him and, and sometimes God answers those prayers and it looks entirely different than what we thought it was going to look when we were praying them, right? I mean, so notice this, I shall not want. And notice here, it's not I shall not need, okay? I shall not want. Now, I want to say this to us today. Guys, we still live in the most blessed country on the face of the planet. We still live in the only place in the world where people are still trying to come here from places that are bad. Guys, we still we have plenty of food. We have a nice place to be. We have clothes. We have security. We have the things that God has given us. And I want to tell you something today. They, I know it's easy to get hung up on disappointments. And I know it's easy to get hung up on the times when God is saying no or God is saying not right now. But I've got to tell you today, don't let that lead to despair because you've got a shepherd that knows more than you do. You've got a shepherd that can see further than you can. You've got a shepherd, thank God, that, that is eternal, that knows the end of us from the beginning. Amen. I mean, so when we look at this, the Lord is my shepherd. No, and when uh, could you imagine being able to say David is my shepherd, or could you be going around saying Pastor Jeff is my shepherd? I want to tell you something. Jeff Hill would be a very limited shepherd. You guys have been around me long enough to know that. I, I'm not all wise. I'm not all powerful. I'm not. I look like I might be those things, but I, I'm not actually those things. I mean, and I would be a poor substitute for somebody who needs the shepherding like the Lord does. And I want to say today, thank God, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, notice the next part of this. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Okay? Now, has anybody else in here ever tried to put a toddler to bed? Right? Some of you have two or three toddlers in your house, and about the time you get one laid down, the other one is back up again. And about the time you get one laid down, the other one's got to have a drink of water. And if they hear you getting one a drink of water, they all have to have a drink of water now, right? I mean, and it's the circus. And, and it's just a circuit all night long trying to get everybody to go lay down. And I want to tell you something today. Somebody said, I'm not going to set bedtimes for my kids. They can just go to bed when they get ready. Uh, <laughs> Can I help you with something? And I don't want to hurt your feelings here, but i got to say this to you. you. The reason you need to impose bedtime is so you can have some sanity for yourself, okay? And your kids cranky will be a lot worse, okay? So make them go on to bed, and they won't be cranky whatever the next morning when they're just exhausted and you got to get them up anyway, all right? 
He, our shepherd, makes us lie down in green pastures. We would not. Rest, especially to the modern mind or to the modern life, I guess, if you want to call it that, is just extremely hard to come by. There's no off. There's no off. There's no place where we get unplugged from the, the details or, the, or the, the daily flow of life, even if you're mindful of that. I, and I'm, I'm preaching to people, and I want you guys to hear me this. And I'm, I'm, Brother Jeff said in this too, all right? But we're never unplugged. We're never, we're, we're never more than just to reach away from the phone or, or, or reach away from social media or reach away from the, the whatever it is that we're email. We're never very far away from a text message. We're never far from those things. Now, everybody loves those conveniences, all right? But I've got to say to us, sometimes I think a break might be in order. I think sometimes a, a meaningful break, and I, and I do mean a meaningful break where we just say, you know what, I've got to get out of gear. I've got to come loose from this. I've got to have time. What happens when we get physically exhausted? Okay, have you ever been physically exhausted? If, you, if you've worked, you have. Okay, can I give you a more, a, a, an exhaustion that's worse? Okay, emotionally exhausted is worse than physical exhaustion. A lot worse. Have you ever been spiritually exhausted? That's a lot worse than physical exhaustion. You have to look at this and say, you know what, when the Lord's trying to get me to rest, I need to listen. When the Lord's trying to get me to be mindful of, of my days, or I'm trying to get me to be mindful of where I'm at, I need to pay attention to what's going on with that. And, and we have so many sources of income, or excuse me, input into our lives daily, and so many different ways for communication to come at us. And, and you guys have heard me preach on the business of our day, and you don't need me to remind you necessarily just of the busyness of our day, but I want to say today that He makes us lie down, okay, in green pastures. Now, I want to say this about sheep. If you have studied sheep very much at all, and I was always, I'm, I'm not kidding when I preach this, I, as a young preacher, I was always offended that God compared us to sheep. I was. I, I was always like, how come we can't be the Lord's lions? You know, or how come we can't be the Lord's eagles? You know, or how come we can't be the Lord's whatever? We got to be sheep. And, and I want to tell you why, okay? And this is true for all of humanity, not just believers, okay? God made us so that we would need Him. Okay, God made us so that in ourselves we would never be complete. Our life without Him would never be complete. Our walk without Him would never be complete. Our joy without Him would never be complete. God made us literally with God-sized holes in every one of our lives. We need Him. Okay, and, and I want to say this, there are people, Lord help them, and there are people probably who are listening to this message tonight who are doing their very best to build a life without God or without His work in their lives. They, they acknowledge God, okay, they, they say, I believe God exists, but then they make their own choices. They choose their own path. They, they, cho they choose all the things that they go do. Now, they come back and pray, Lord, help me get this straightened out, or Lord, help me untangle this puzzle, or Lord, help me get this knot untangled again. I mean, they, they do that. But I want to say this to you today. If we're not careful, we, we will be practicing, we will be Christians in word, okay, but a whole lot more atheist in practice if we're not careful, okay? God made us to need Him. God made us to lean on Him. And this is hard for us especially, and for men, this is especially hard because we're taught to be a man, you know, to, to figure it out. You know, man up, we're going we're gonna, to, you know, just, oh, you're, you're bleeding, we'll rub some dirt on that and let's keep going. You know, I mean, you're, oh, your arm fell off, we'll just bring it with you. Maybe somebody can reattach it when we get down the road a little ways. I mean, we, we have this idea of what manhood looks like, but I want to tell you something. The fellow that wrote this psalm was probably more of a he-man than anybody in this room. His name was David, killed a giant, okay, was a leader of armies, did all kind of outstanding feats, and was a man that was a battle. The Bible called him a bloody man. I mean, David was not un unfamiliar with danger. David was not unfamiliar with personal danger and peril, but David was a man that realized, uh, yes, he was a man's man, but I want to tell you something, he was also a man that knew his place with God. He knew he needed a relationship with God. He says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He makes me to lie down in green pastures. And then I like this next one. He leads me beside the still waters. He leads me beside the still waters. Guys, have you ever thought about what it looks like? And maybe this will be something we can talk about here in a little while. What it looks like for the leadership of God to happen in our lives. What does it look like? Not for me to just talk that, but to live that out. What does it look like for me to experience the leadership of God? And we'll, we'll talk about it here in a minute. But now think about this. And for those online, think about this just a second. When you're praying for God's leadership in your life, does it look like this? Lord, I have a pretty good plan. And if you will do this, 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 and this, I'll do this, 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 and this. And, and I got to tell you something. That's not God's leadership. That's you trying to talk God into your scheme. Can I be honest with you? A lot of times that's exactly how Brother Jeff prays. Can I tell you something? We need his leadership in our lives more than we need our scheming. We need his leadership in our lives more than we need our abilities to come up with a really great plan for ourselves. What does it look like for me to surrender myself to his leadership? And can I tell the difference between the leadership of God and self-leadership, or worse than that, false leadership. He leads me beside the still waters. And then, I love the next part of this, He restores my soul. He restores my soul. The word picture of this, and you guys have heard me preach on this a time or two, but the word picture of this is what they call, the, it's the restoring of a sheep that's gotten cast down. And the sheep, they have, to, they, they have to be careful what they eat. But if they get the wrong thing to eat or if they don't get enough, the water and the feed is not right, they have to be pretty careful how they feed them or what they let, they let them get into. But a sheep will literally lay down and lose which way is up because its equilibrium will get messed up. That's why they have to find them. They, when a sheep wanders off, you have to go find it because it won't find its way back. A lot of times it'll just be so easy a prey because a lot of times they, they can't, Distinguish up from down. You can't trust a sheep to find its way home. Now, we had a sheep here the other night for the fall festival that will never, ever get lost because it's pretty sure Kevin Fuquay is his daddy. <coughs> they had a rope on the thing, and it, and it was just, it was heading for the woods, and I went over there and got it, and then I had to drag that sheep with me because... It didn't know me, and it was like, I don't know you, I'm not going. And I was like, you are coming with me. And so I just kept on dragging. And, but the sheep, I'm not kidding, the sheep looked over there and saw Kevin and said, Daddy! <laughs> and I let go of the rope, and that sheep went right straight to him and just followed him around like a dog. It was pretty funny. And I laughed at him. I said, Kevin, he said, I don't know what it is. I said, that sheep knows you. Okay, and because it's from his house, I mean, so they, they brought it up here very graciously and let us feed it 500 pounds of something. I mean, that sheep probably gained 25 pounds that night from everything everybody fed it. But a sheep has to have somebody to lift it back up. Has to have somebody to help it cope. In those days, what the shepherd had on hand was simple stuff that would fit. Like David, when David took the five smooth stones and put them in his shepherd's bag... But in a shepherd's bag, there was just the simplest things. There would be a, some kind of a knife or some kind of a sharp instrument to, to work with. There would be olive oil. There would just be simple things. They didn't have a toolbox like we have now. I mean, you didn't run down to tractor supply and buy stuff to work on a sheep in that day. But one of the most common things a shepherd had to do was to take some time with that sheep, and he would take the olive oil, and he would rub it around on that sheep's face and around his ears and around his mouth and around his nose and his eyes were particularly because the bugs were so bad and they would torment a sheep to the point to where a sheep would find something to run into trying to do something about that. So you'd see them literally bashing their heads into a rock or a tree or whatever it was trying to do something with the buzzing and with the torment that was going on in their heads. But a good shepherd would go and get that sheep and stand them up, and work with their legs, and take that oil and rub it around their eyes and their nose 
in their ears and help them deal with what was going on. And for us, when the Bible says that he restores my soul, it literally means he makes me, me again. He makes me, me again. Now, I want to say something to you today. The hustle and bustle of life, the wear and tear of everything that happens to us in the course of a week, everything that happens on a job, everything that happens with family, everything intentional or unintentional, everything that we see in the course of a day absolutely impacts us at a deep level. We are pretty good at being strong. We are pretty good at keeping a brave face on things. But can I tell you something today that all has come to as easy to us as breathing? Where do we go to be restored? Ready? We ought to stand so close to that shepherd every time he moves, he's got to move us out of the way. We ought to be so near to him. We ought to stay. We ought to abide. Somebody said, Preacher, I've got problems. That's even better reason to stay up close to that shepherd. Brother Jeff, I'm broken. That's even a better place to stay up close to the shepherd. Hey, Pastor, I'm struggling with something. That's even a better reason to stay up close to that shepherd. He restores our soul. And I hope you guys will hear this in here tonight, and I hope online too. Nobody knows you. Nobody knows you like he does. Nobody understands you like he does. Nobody loves you like he does. You've got a great shepherd, and he restores our soul. And I'm preaching this tonight to people, and, I, and probably online too. Who are saying, Pastor Jeff, I mean, you got to be kidding. With everything else that's going on, you're giving us an exercise. I want to tell you something that will help us with a lot of the problems that we're facing into right this minute. You ready? Just good old-fashioned worship. Getting in God's presence. Turning off what you have to turn off. Turn on what you have to turn on. Taking some time and just having just some sweet time with Him. About 15 minutes of worship time with Him, and I mean actual real worship where you get in His presence and I get past all of the everything else and you drown out some of the other noise and you get past some of the other stuff that's going on. Let Him soothe your soul. Let Him take the salve of the Word of God to you. Let Him take the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God and, and help you deal with some of the things that are tormenting you. I'm going to tell you something. There's nothing like that. Let him speak peace. Let him speak forgiveness. Let him bring joy. Let him put peace. He restores my soul. And then he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now I want to preach on this word here, paths of righteousness, for a minute. <laughs> Everybody thinks... And I hear this a lot, okay, that the leadership of God in our lives is going to be some kind of untried, untested path that nobody has ever seen or gone on or anything else before. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm not. But this word paths of righteousness literally means a well-worn path that's been used for generations. A well-worn path that's been used for generations. It literally is a rut. Now, when I was a kid, we would learn how to drive, and I learned how to drive on a tractor before I did in a car, okay? And there were some of those old roads that we had a tractor on, and, and i I got to be honest with you. Somebody said, Brother Jeff, wasn't that dangerous? Well, yeah, it was dangerous if you got on the wrong pedals or if you got the wrong thing turned off or on or that type of thing, but that, uh, that old tractor, those old farm roads or those old field roads, you ready? 
there were ruts in those roads that you could just about turn a tractor loose and it would just go. I mean, I know you have to correct, but I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it was just a well-worn, it was a rut. And somebody said, I'm trying to avoid ruts. I got to tell you, sometimes the very best thing we can do is to go back to the old paths and just relax and let him be God, all right? And I could preach right here a minute. I think I will go ahead and drop my anchor right here for a second and preach on some old paths. Ready? Let's not leave the old paths of praying. And I don't mean drive-by prayers like we do McDonald's drive-in. I got to say, I went to the McDonald's up here the other day and they actually got my order right. I thanked them twice. I did. They came back and I said, I just want to tell you all thank you. They said, what for? I said, well, I actually got what I ordered for. And they got my change right. I appreciate that. I almost went through the line again just to say, hey, I just want to say thank y'all. I was thanking the Lord going down the road. I said, I ordered chicken nuggets, and guess what I had? I actually had chicken, the, the right ones. I'm not talking about drive through praying. I'm talking about prayers. And I'll tell you something else, the old paths of the Bible. They are, and you've got to hear this, there's no substitute for God's Word in your life. There's no substitute for God's Word in our day-to-day, -day, how we get through from day-to-day -day or from time-to-time, to time, moment to moment. The Scriptures absolutely have a place, and, and we need to get back to, you know what, I need to get my Bible. I want to say this to you. Lord knows there's a whole lot of truth coming at us from every direction right now, from every media outlet, every source you can get it. And, and, and if you think all of those outlets don't have an agenda, you, you are, we need to talk. Okay, can I tell you something today? Christians, what if we knew our Bibles as well as we know some of those facts and figures and statistics? Hmm. Lord help. And then it's the old, uh, the old path of worship. When's the last time you just said, you know what, God has been good to me and I'm just going to say thank you. God has blessed me, and I'm just going to get my hands up. You know what? God has favored me, and I'm going to make sure he hears me. I want to tell you something today, and you need to hear this. The heart of gratitude, and we're in Thanksgiving month, by the way, but it, when the heart of gratitude rises up in a Christian, that ought to be as, as, as real to us and as normal to us as our next breath. What do we have to be thankful for? I'd wager it's a lot. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now I want you to see this today. Because there are absolutely schools of thought that say if you walk with God, you never have that. You never go through a place of valleys. Or shadows. Guys, that teaching is as far into the word of God. The Apostle Paul, do you think jail was probably some kind of a dark place to be? The Lord Jesus going to the cross, I think that might have been a shadow for him. I mean, it was victorious in the end, but it was certainly a time of suffering. Do you think what the disciples went through waiting to see what was going to happen after Jesus was resurrected? I mean, and not one of them uh, lived to old age. I mean, only one of them lived to old age, and then the rest of them were all martyred. And the one that lived to old age, they tried to martyr him two different ways, and he survived it. The teaching that we're not going to have valleys, the teaching that we're not going to have a struggle, the teaching or the thinking that, you know, if I do my thing and I'm all right with God and God's all right with me, he'll give me a life with no, I won't need an escape hatch from. I, guys, it's, not, it's, it's foreign to the scriptures. That's not accurate. Here's a man, David, who was a man after God's own heart. And David fully said, when I walk through the valley, when I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I want to tell you something. David knew that fear. And I want to say to us, listen, our lives are not going to be insulated from that or exempted from that. But I want you to see something. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? You are there. You are there. Thou art with me. Now, Christian, 
I want to ask you a question. When you go through the hard place in your life, are you, are you more confident in your ability to figure it out? Are you more confident in your resources? Are you more confident in your experiences or your own wisdom? Or do you, you know what, do you just say, you know what, I am going to face into this valley and I'm going to go right on through here because I know who my shepherd is and I know there's not been a point in my life that I was somewhere where he was not. You are there. Thank God he is there. Hallelujah. You are there. Notice the glory is not I have a life that doesn't have that. I have a life that doesn't have struggles. No, no. The glory is God is there with us. The shepherd abides. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, I'm not going to preach on all this tonight. I'd love to. But I want you to see this tonight with the rod and the staff. It takes both. One is for the sheep's protection, and the other is for the sheep's correction. The rod and the staff. Now, I know people are going, no, now, Brother Jeff, that word picture is not right. Uh, but, guys, I've got to tell you something. Sometimes God's sheep needs correction. Sometimes God lets discipline come into our lives. And sometimes God lets that come to us in such a way that we have to say, you know what, the Lord did that. Now, I have people from time to time will ask me and say, Brother Jeff, how can I know if I'm being chastened of the Lord? And this is in Hebrews, I believe it's Hebrews 12 and 13 where some of this is talked about. But here's how you can know, okay? If God is chastising or putting one of us, his children, through chastening, he will always let us know that it's him and what that's for. Always. Otherwise, what's the point of chastening? Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've, I've gone through chastening in my life before, and I've, I've had some e episodes in my life where I was just as goofy as you could be and just as crazy as you could be, and God let things come to my life where I had to go around and, and deal with the outcomes of bad decisions. And I want to tell you something, that's the chastening of the Lord too. But why do I say that he tells us what it's for? Okay, God's chastening is always corrective and redemptive, okay? Whereas the things that Satan sends to our lives are not corrective, but for destruction. That's the way you can tell. It takes the rod and the staff, though. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now I know in our church family right now, and there are people online too who watch who are not part of our church family properly, but they participate, um, they're guests. But in our church family right now, we have about every kind of circumstance happening you can think of. We've got a, a dear family that's lost a loved one this morning. We, that we'll be talking about that in a minute. We've got another one that's had a surgery. We've got another one that are, and we have people who are looking for a job or people who are looking for a house or different circumstances that are happening in our church family on top of the election that we're all concerned about and everybody's praying about, including me too. I absolutely have a way I want that to go. I voted. I didn't just tell y'all to go vote. Me and, me and Miss Terry went and voted too. Took three hours. Pickens County. They uh, separated it now, and next time we go, it'll only be an hour and a half. So, <laughs> but why this psalm now? Why this psalm now? I think it's a timely reminder. I think it's a place for me and this is what the Lord sort of spoke it to me today I hadn't moved I'm still with you I see yes I see what's going on and I, I abide would you bow your heads please I'm through preaching <clears throat> our father tonight Lord 
this psalm is so familiar to us, I think that most of us could quote it, at least big portions of it, without any trouble at all. It's something that we memorized as kids or something that we, Lord, over the years we've heard it so many times. Lord, I think sometimes we're so familiar with its words that we miss out on the sweetness of it or the truths of it. I pray tonight, Father, that you'll help us to remember our shepherd. Lord, and to rest in all that you do for us. Lord, more than what you do for us, help us to rest in who you are. I'm so thankful that we are secure in your hands. And there we can rest. And there we can find peace. Lord, there we can find shelter. I pray tonight, not just for our church family, but Lord, for our country, that you would remind us as believers that we've not been abandoned, not been orphaned. You are God, and we can trust you. We love you tonight. We thank you for your grace and your goodness. Lord, we ask tonight that you would work on the prayer requests that have been made known to us here tonight. And Lord, for those that will come in in the next day or two, we pray you just have your way. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your goodness to us. We ask these things tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for taking time out to be with us tonight in our Bible study time. I hope we'll see you guys next Sunday.